My name is Teresa Ray, but everybody around here knows me as Tree. Um, so, and I'm a commercial fisherman on Ocracoke, North Carolina, and I've been doing this for eight years now. And yeah. in uh, 1996, and what brought me here was my father remarried a woman here, and you know I didn't really get into commercial fishing until about eight years ago. I was doing massage therapy, and I ran off, got married for a while, and did that, and. You know, sometimes you learn the hard way that <laughs> marriage isn't always the best solution to anything. So, uh, but, um, you know, at a certain point in time in your life, you have to figure out whether or not you want to make your own self happy or if you want to make everybody around you happy. And so I chose to, it was a tough decision, you know, but, you know, life happens. And my husband left the island, you know, which was fine. <laughs> it was totally fine. And uh, I needed a job, and my captain now, his name is Hardy Plyler, um, my ex-husband worked for him as a fisherman, and he helped out around the fish house, and so he was leaving, and I needed a job, and, you know, growing up, I was always a tomboy, always wanted to be outside, hunting, hiking, you know, anything I could do just to be outside is what I was pretty much looking for, and, um, you know, I just told my captain, I said, you know, I may be a, a woman, but, you know, treat me like anyone else on your boat, and, you know, thus far, eight years later, you know, there's, you know, you shed a few tears privately, because you don't want to cry in front of a, you know, a salty old man on a boat, but, I mean, it's difficult work, you know. When I chose to commercial fish, it was just a moment in my life to do something where I could make money. I could support myself without, you know, the help of anybody else because, you know, sometimes it's just what you have to do. You have to rely upon yourself for happiness, money, you know, anything that you want. And uh, I thought it was a cool job, you know, get to be outside and see, you know, nature at its best or at its worst, you know. And we don't go out if it's blowing more than 35 miles an hour. I mean, because that can get pretty rough. I mean, if you cross that just on the ferry, you know, you've been out there and it's rocking and rolling. But, uh. You know, it's it's a wonderful thing. I just I dig being out there. I enjoy physical labor. I always have. I don't know why. I just probably because I hate to work out, and it's one thing that keeps me in shape. But uh, you know, it's just <laughs> it's just something different. You know, it's I'm honored to have been given the position as long as I have. You know, starting my eighth season, and um, you know, you get a lot of I mean, you get a lot of stares. I mean, this is definitely a male dominated profession. And, uh, but, you know, who cares, you know, as long as I enjoy doing it and I do my job, you know, to the best of my ability every day, it doesn't matter what you do, you know, and, uh, but I just, you know, it's just a cool thing to do, you know, and after doing this, you know, if the government doesn't put us out of business, I mean, I'm going to do it as long as I can because I don't think at any point I could go back and work in a office <laughs> or anything like that you know so but um yeah <laughs> okay and um does this like go year round or is there like a no we fish um starting now we've been fishing for about two weeks but usually you want the water temperature to be at least between 55 and 60 degrees 60 degree water is when the bluefish will start showing up trout can trickle in 55 to 60 but um you know, as you can see this past weekend, I mean, it's just, it's gnarly, it's blowing, you know, 15 to 25 out of the northwest. You know, it's just, it's too cold right now. So you have to kind of, it fluctuates, you know, once this cold snap moves through and, you know, we'll get warmer weather. We'll, so we'll start going from middle of March to December 1st is when we have to have up our pound nets. And I, I fish gill nets and pound nets, where gill nets you have uh, monofilament about 200 yard shots where we when we fish gill net you know we have to put the the net in line which means we have a lead line and we have the bundle of webbing and then we have the top line with the corks and we have to sew them all together and uh, that's what we call hanging net and um and those you know you pick those up every day and you can move them around to different spots whereas a pound net is a, a stationary uh net 
where, you know, it's in, ours is in like 15 foot of water. And you have a, like a 400 foot lead line, which will lead the fish off of a, a shoal or something, because fish lead. And it goes into like a series of like, like a crib and a heart. And then once it gets in there, you just, you know, whenever the weather's right, you go in with a different boat and you drop it down and you just pick out the fish you want with a dip net and everything else is alive and you just throw it out and, you know, it'll more than likely it'll come right back in the next day. You know, we get a lot of horseshoe crabs, you know, but, uh, that's really cool. I think I dig pound netting. Um, it's my favorite just cause I enjoy seeing all the species together swimming around and like your own personal touch tank aquarium, you know, but, uh, but you have to be careful. I, I guess it was about four years ago now. It was pretty rough out there in the fall, um, fishing our flounder pound and this other man that we were, that was fishing with us, you know, it was just an accident. <clears throat> stingray got thrown in the boat and the barb on the stingray, it hit my foot up around, you know, my big toe on my left foot and it stuck in my foot about an inch and a half and they had to flay it out. So, I mean, there's dangers. It's definitely a dangerous profession. I mean, it's not anything like deadliest catch out here. So, <laughs> you know, that, that's all right. I don't I wouldn't want to do that, I don't think. But, uh, you know, there's dangers in it. You know, you just, that's why you always just have to be prepared and, you know, stay focused, keep your eyes open and your mouth shut and just listen to what the captain has to say, you know, because he's the one in control and, you know, but... Thankfully, fortunately, I'm a good listener. <laughs> but, uh, you know, so it all works out, you know, and then, you know, so gill nuts and pound nets is pretty much what we do. And um, in the wintertime, I'll do, if there is a scallop season, which is bay scallops, which are like tiny little scallops, you know, I'll do that, you know, but um, yeah, just fishing. It's great. It's good stuff. All right. Well, thank you.